Grace and peace be with you. Welcome to this service from St Luke's Uniting Church in Heighton in Geelong. I'm Paul Stevens, the ordained minister in placement. This week, our focus is a short section of the New Testament book of Hebrews, in which the writer exhorts us, exhorts us, should I say, to hold fast to the faith. Let's begin our worship with a prayer. It's got a response in it, so I invite you at home to share in the response. Great and compassionate God, we come before you in love and with humility. We worship you. You are God the creator. You brought everything that we know, everything that we see, everything that we are into being through your living word. We worship you. You are the God who is the triune community of love. You are the God who loves us so much that you sent your son to release us from our bondage to save us, and so we worship you. You are the God who calls us to follow Christ and live as part of his body, the church. And so we pray in the name of Christ and we say, we worship you. I'm going to lead a, another prayer in a moment, but I invite you now just to, just to pause wherever you are and whatever you're doing and think about the things you're thankful for the things that are happening in your life that you want to give thanks to God for. And also, perhaps you might think of those things that weigh heavy upon you, perhaps concerns of your own or concerns of others. And just as we pause for a moment or two in silence in this service, I invite you to place those things before God. We confess before you, O God, of the way that we fall short. We all make mistakes. We all struggle to love like Jesus. To live life fully, you call us to love you, love neighbour and love ourselves. Lord, forgive us for the times when we neglect you. Forgive us for the times when we put ourselves before your way and the good of others. And forgive us for the times when we damage ourselves through our thoughts and actions. God of deep forgiveness, hear our prayers in the name of Christ, who, ha who gave his life for us all. Amen. In the psalm, Psalm 103, it's written, As far as the east is from the west, so far has God removed our sins from us. Jesus came preaching peace to those who are near and peace to those who are far off. My friends, you are free to be forgiven people, to serve as forgiven people, to celebrate as forgiven people. Thanks be to God. I wonder how much of the Bible you have read over the years. Have you ever tried to read it from the beginning to the end? The Uniting Church, like many churches, uses a lectionary, which gives different readings for different Sundays and other special days in the church's year. The lectionary has its limitations, but one of its great strengths is that it encourages us, us to read selections and elements of the Bible that we might otherwise avoid. And I have a suspicion that the book of Hebrews might fall into this latter category for many people. We don't know who wrote the book of Hebrews, although we do know it wasn't Paul. It's not so much a letter as a sermon, an exhortation, it contains some memorable phrases which are often used by Christians. Phrases like, we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses. And that famous passage from chapter 13 of Hebrews, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today and forever. But the argument offered by the writer can seem to us in places somewhat convoluted and a bit dense. And the language and imagery, especially relating to sacrifice, 
can seem a little alien. The passage we're about to hear falls after a lengthy section outlining the sacrifice that Christ has made for us once and for all. The passage begins by saying how through Christ we have direct access to the living God. Our scripture reading today is from Hebrews 10, 19 to 25. We have then, my friends, complete freedom to go into the most holy place by means of the death of Jesus. He opened for us a new way, a living way, through the curtain that is, through his own body. We have a great priest in charge of the house of God. So let us come near to God with a sincere heart and a sure faith with hearts that have been purified from a guilty conscience and with bodies washed clean with water. Let us hold on firmly to the hope we profess because we can trust God to keep his promise. Let us be concerned for one another to help one another to show love and to do good. Let us not give up the habit of meeting together as some are doing. Instead, let us encourage one another all the more since you see that the day of the Lord is coming nearer. As I said a little earlier, the book of Hebrews is more of a sermon than a letter. Having underlined all that Christ has done for us, the preacher, in the second half of the passage that you've just heard, exhorts his hearers to hold fast to the faith. Clearly, the people to whom the sermon is addressed are struggling a bit to hold fast to the faith. They're going through a difficult patch. Perhaps they were wondering whether following this Christ business was worthwhile. Perhaps they were being persecuted. I think certainly going through hard times as church and Christians is something we can relate to today. In in the many years that I've been involved in the church, the place of the church and Christian faith in general in Australia has been on the retreat And there are now generations of people in this land who not only do not choose to be part of the life of the church, but have no knowledge of the saving good news that is at the heart of the church's life. Now, I could blather on about this for ages, but the point I simply want to make is this. There are hard times for the faithful today. And there are hard times, I think, oh, this is certainly a challenging time for people in the broader community who want to explore faith because such things are put aside by many voices in our society. Well, I want to echo the words of the preacher who wrote the book of Hebrews. I want to say to Christians, hold on, hold fast. And I want to say to those of you who might be exploring matters of faith, it's worth the effort. But, let, but at this point in this, in this little reflection that I'm offering, I'd like to pick up three of the points the preacher makes to encourage his ancient hearers, because I think they encourage us. The first is this. We can trust that God keeps God's promises. The phrase, as you heard, that the preacher uses is, hold on firmly to the hope we profess because we can trust God to keep his promise. Now, we have one member of the Stevens family, our family, who is into rock climbing. That's a picture of him there, if (laughs) if you can believe it. And he will underline that what counts, what keeps you safe, is that the ropes to which you are attached while you're hanging off some amazing cliff or going between two huge cliffs like he is in the picture, what keeps you attached, what keeps you safe is that your lines are anchored properly and that your equipment is in good order. So similarly, 
Those of us who, take, who live this life, who seek to follow in the way of God, can have genuine hope for ourselves, the world and the future when we attach ourselves to the way of Christ. Because in so doing, we are anchored securely in the sure and certain hope found in God. So that's the first point. We can trust that God keeps God's promises. Even We don't necessarily have to go shimmying across between two cliffs, but we can be sure that whatever comes in life, God can be trusted. Second point the preacher makes is that we are to live lives of love and good deeds. You see, the Christian faith is about word and deed. It's a lived faith. Now, that might be obvious to many of us who are Christians. Today, and indeed in the broader community, it's taken for granted that it's important to care for others. But it was not always the case. It was not always assumed to be the right thing, to care for the vulnerable and the needy. Romans would have thought it strange. Romans of the era of the preacher and the letter to the Hebrews or the sermon to the Hebrews would have thought it strange. Christian care doing good deeds, has changed the world. And even though many in, the Austra- in Australia today probably don't know this or have, ne- or have forgotten, many expressions of care in our community, like hospitals and welfare agencies, all have their genesis in Christians living out their faith. So the second point is, don't underrate the impact of living lives of love and doing good deeds. And the third point, the importance of not neglecting to meet and encourage one another. I think the experience of the church being closed to in-person worship during COVID has shown the value of personal connection for the sake of our minds, bodies and souls. A video like this connects with many people and enables people like you to share in a service at a time when it suits you. It is a great tool for teaching, but it does not take the place of the gathered community where the community ministers to each other, where people care for each other and engage with each other. There's value in meeting together to encourage each other. So sisters and brothers, be encouraged by the preacher who wrote the sermon we call the book of Hebrews. Hold fast to something that is securely anchored, the promises of God. Continue to do good deeds and meet regularly for worship and so encourage each other in the way of Christ. Let's listen to a a hymn from our choir.
We move now in our service to pray for others. And we're conscious that um, th in this last week, we've had Remembrance Day. So we know that many people have been impacted by the consequences of war. So we might think of those impacted by war today and those impacted by wars in, of days past. So that, they're some of the people we're praying for, but we're also praying for the world in general. And I invite you to, in this time of prayer, bring your own concerns and needs and the needs of those that you love before God. Let's pray. Compassionate and ever-present God, we pray for all who have been caught up in and impacted by war. For all those whose bodies and spirits bear the marks of war. For all who have, loved, who have lost loved ones due to war. And those who continue to suffer as a consequence of war. We pray for all who minister to veterans, to, their family, to the families of veterans and to survivors. And we remember those who live in despair because of the impact of war. We pray for our world and we pray for the peoples of our world that they may embrace your way of peace and reconciliation. And we pray for ourselves. We are called to be messengers of your hope. We pray that in, our, that in word and deed we might engage in a ministry of hope and love. Pray for the church in Australia that we might hold fast to the hope we find in the gospel. And we also remember others whose needs weigh heavy on our hearts this day. For them and for us, we pray in the name of Christ. Amen. We're going to now hear a version of the Lord's Prayer, which is from a, um, an aid agency related to the Anglican Church in England and was found by one of our members on a video. And uh, while it's not quite the Lord's Prayer as we know it, it has a sense of our call to be a people praying for a world renewed. So just share in this version of the Lord's Prayer.
think there's a, a, a wonderful blending there of kind of traditional singing with uh, a message for our time and the words of our Lord and some modern words. As we think about the, the week coming up, perhaps the thing that uh, we... Well, we'll just go through some of the things that are coming up. Wednesday we have our 8am Zoom meeting and if you want to be part of that, it's a time of prayer and sharing, just go to our Facebook page and you'll find the details there and you can get to our Facebook page through our website uh, at stlukesuca.org.au. Uh, we we're also... Um, this week, I think, uh, is the last chance you have to uh, buy some cards from Val Grills for the leprosy mission and details are on the slide there of Valerie's contact details and she has Christmas cards available and I suspect it's not too late to ring her about now. But uh, as I was sort of hinting at the beginning of this time of sharing, the big news is that next week we reopen for in-person worship on a Sunday morning. We've already had midweek worship but uh, Sunday morning worship begins on the 21st at 9.30am, which is Christ the King Sunday. Uh, currently, a, a 9.30am service will be for those who are all completely vaccinated. This is to meet the COVID restrictions. But we'll begin on the 28th of November having a second service at 11 o'clock, which will be for a smaller number and which meets the COVID regulations, which means we don't have to ask about people's COVID vaccination status. Let's just give thanks to God for the good things that God gives us and offer ourselves and our many blessings to God in prayer. And you might like to share with me in this prayer that I'm going to put up on the screen now. Lord God, you have given us more than we asked for and more than we deserve. May we show a like generosity in all that we do for you and for our neighbours. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Friends, go forth into the world in peace. Be of good courage. Hold fast that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Honour all people. Love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. And the blessing of God, the richest blessing of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, be with you now and always. Amen. And may this good news ring out. Go in peace.